So you want to do some tilling pretty fast? Well, here's all you need. Check out this bad boy. This definitely gets the job done. Tilled this entire field in no time at all. Oh, you don't have a spare $100,000 or whatever this thing costs? Okay, we'll show you another piece of equipment that will be perfect for you. Hey, this is Rich from HouseBurns.com. My brother Dave and I renovate houses along with Dave's son Caleb. And today we want to show you how to use a rototiller. If you're new to our channel, consider subscribing because we want to show you how to do a job yourself so you can save a ton of money. Isn't that right, Morgan? <laughs> All right, so the rototiller we have here is the Earthquake Victory. And I must say this rototiller is absolutely awesome. What I love about it are these giant tires. Also, this rototiller is really powerful. So the tines are in the back here and therefore it's called a rear tine tiller. So you can have a front tine tiller or a rear tine tiller. So the deal with the front tine tiller is they're generally less powerful. They're probably lighter, easier to maneuver, but if the thing's not really doing the job, that's not gonna do you much good. So what could happen is you might have to go over the same area multiple times to get to the depth that you wanna till. But this one, wow, it is so cool. This earthquake is gonna till a path that's 16 inches wide and it can till to a depth of 10 inches, which is awesome. We're doing a hoop house full of tomatoes and we're supposed to till that eight to 12 inches. So this 10 inch tilling depth is perfect for the job that we're gonna do. So you can tip the earthquake forward and this is a tine shield. You can lift that up and this is called the drag stake and this determines how deep you're gonna be tilling. The further up you put it, the deeper it's gonna till. So you've got this little cotter pin and you can just, there's different holes on here that just goes through the hole and then there's a, you just attach the cotter pin like that. So there it is attached. Something else I wanted to show you back here is what can happen is after using this guy a while, a bunch of vines and stuff can, and mud can get all wound around there. You want to clean that out so that it can run well. So the first thing you do is come around to the front and unhook your spark plug. So now that thing isn't gonna start up while we're back here fooling with it. Then you won't be getting mangled, which is always a plus. I've just been using a knife to kind of cut the vines free. So we wanna get all this stuff out of here so that it'll operate efficiently. So it's getting a bunch of junk out of there. All right, so I worked at this a little while and it looks a lot better. This is how you want it to look when you're gonna start tilling. So we will put the shield back down. We'll plug the spark plug back in. Here's the gas tank right there. Real easy to fill it up. And cool thing is that you don't have to put oil in it or anything like that. You don't have to mix it in, oil in with the gas. So it's just, they want you to use 87 octane or higher unleaded fuel. Okay, so the engine oil goes down here. There's a little orange plug right there and it goes, it's kind of like right below the spark plug is the easiest way to tell where it is. One note about this machine is it's pretty heavy and it's gonna come in this box unassembled. And I'd have to tell you the easiest way to assemble it is to have your nephew do it. <laughs> so uh, my nephew, Caleb, is super mechanical, very handy. And he said, it, you know, it wasn't the easiest thing to put together. So just a little heads up, some assembly required, but I'm sure you're gonna figure it out. This is the awesome hoop house that we have been building, mostly Caleb. This one's 20 feet wide, 60 feet long, and we're gonna be planting tomatoes in here. So this is the Earthquake Victory model, and it costs about $500. Is it worth it? I would say definitely if you are a serious gardener. If you don't buy this thing, you could go and rent one at your local tool rental place. You could probably rent it, I would guess, from 60 to 100 for the day. I guess it just depends on how much you're going to use it. Whenever you're gonna operate a rototiller, be sure to wear your safety glasses. Now they have these shields on the back, but it's possible that debris could still get kicked up. So safety first. All right, to start this baby, there are a few steps. All you gotta do is get everything in the right position and it'll start right up. Um, there's an on off switch here at the top. So we're gonna flip that to on. Now we gotta find the choke. All right, so the choke is right here in front. Oh yeah, here's another lever that you need to have in the correct position. So this is uh, for your fuel line. Just move that to the on position, which is all the way to the right. This is our choke right here. And to get it 
started, we're going to put the choke on. So the choke will be all the way to the left. Then up here is the throttle. So you can see it's got a little turtle. That's the slow position. And over here, there's a fast rabbit. But to get this started, we're gonna put it halfway between the two. So there's turtle, there's rabbit. We're gonna put it like a 45 degree angle halfway between them. And now we're ready to roll. So the next thing we need to do, we're gonna pull the starter cord out once and then let it go back in. The next time we pull it, it's probably gonna start up and then we'll be ready to roll. Up here, this lever is gonna control our tines. So all we gotta do is bring it to this bar and that will engage the tines. It's happened to me before where I'm working in an area with a lot of roots and stuff that the whole thing gets stuck. So what's really awesome about this particular tiller is it's got a reverse feature. It's right here and you just pull it up and the whole tiller will reverse. It'll get you out of a jam. And if you're in a bad situation, it's really awesome because that thing is so heavy. If it gets stuck, man, good luck getting it out if you didn't have that reverse. So anyway, that is a super cool feature on the earthquake. All right, let's do some tilling. And they want you to put your, your free hand right here when you're starting it. So we're gonna pull it out once. And now we're gonna try to start it. All right, I'd actually just run it a little while ago. So in my case, the engine was already warm, so I didn't need to put the choke on. But if you're doing a cold start, use the choke. If the engine's already warm, you will have the choke off. But anyway, here we go. Let's do some tilling. All right, so after I wasn't fooling around trying to make the video, I could concentrate on what I was doing. And I got this initial pass done like 15 to 20 minutes. And so this is, this is what it looks like after just the initial pass. So not bad. Um, I did that going on the second uh, adjustment. So that, that would be the top one, and this is the second one. So I'm going to just keep moving this thing up and it, it'll let us get deeper on each pass. Hopefully I only have to do one or two more and we'll be good. Oh, something I wanted to tell you about when you go in reverse. Okay, so you just let go of this lever. That'll stop the, the tines from spinning. And then you pull this to go in reverse. But one little tip is you wanna lift this up before you start going in reverse because this little tine shield can get hung up. So. Anyway, just remember to lift it up, lift the machine up, and then hit the reverse lever, and you'll be good. One interesting point to make is that the way this these tines go, they're not going the way the machine is going, they're going exactly the opposite way, which is interesting. It causes some resistance for the operator. All right, here's the end of the second pass and things are starting to look a lot better. So it's basically just up to you how deep you wanna go. I'm gonna Keep moving the adjustment up and we're gonna go a little deeper on pass number three. I think it's starting to look pretty nice. I'll probably hit it one or two more times before I plant. The point is that every time you make a pass, it goes deeper into the soil. So it's just gonna get better and better. So we're in the middle of Indiana. This is Indiana clay soil. 
and it's been baking in the sun for a while so it's kind of like trying to rototill a terracotta planter so i mean the stuff it's the ground is just like so compacted and hard so i'm actually really happy to get this result right here because you know that's that's nice loose dirt there that i can work with some safety points i think i'm getting dirt all over myself but definitely wear safety glasses i kept taking mine off because i was sweating a lot and i was trying to talk to you guys but definitely wear your glasses if you're ever using this thing and you're getting like panicky about something or you're like oh my gosh i've lost control all you got to do is let go of this black lever and the tines are going to stop and the whole machine's going to come to a halt so you don't have to worry about that also the reverse thing is really important so you would let go of this handle first that stops the tines and then before you pull this reverse lever just lift this up a little bit not a lot just a couple of inches and that will help you reverse out of whatever situation you've gotten yourself into real easily all right so recap the pros and cons of the earthquake let's start with the cons at $500, some people might think that's kind of expensive. Like for me, we're doing a lot of garden beds, and so it was well worth buying this machine. If I bought a tiller for my tractor, a cultivator, whatever you want to call it, it's very expensive. So for us to spend $500 was quite reasonable. And in addition, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can just rent this. The second issue with it is it's not the easiest to assemble, but if you just give it a little effort, you'll figure it out. So now let's go over the pros. First off, love the giant tires. It, it helps you move around in difficult areas. Also, this thing's 16 inches wide, so it doesn't take all day to get a project done. And in addition, the thing is just, it's beefy and it's gigantic, but it's also quite maneuverable, probably because of those giant tires. Oh, in addition, this reverse, you're not gonna find that on every tiller. This reverse thing, if you're working in a hoop house like I am, you're always caught in the corner. And so to just easily be able to back out of the corner and get on with your tilling is an awesome feature. That's probably my favorite feature of the whole thing. Other than that, it does a great job. And you know, speaking of that, I mean, like I was saying, this, this soil we have is it's almost like concrete. And I did three passes out there and it's already reasonable right now and i'm going to probably hit it two more times would i buy this exact model again yes i would buy the earthquake i would recommend the earthquake i'm very happy that we bought it if you buy one of these or you rent one of these and you use it let us know what you think about it in the comments below we'd be very interested to hear your opinion if you haven't subscribed yet please do because we have a ton of home improvement videos on the way thanks much for viewing and we'll see you in this video